Thank you to Unbounce for sponsoring today's episode. Go to unbounce.com slash scishow and use the promo code scishow to get 20% off your first three months. Hans Spiemann won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1935 for foundational contributions to what is now the field of developmental biology. Without those experiments, we wouldn't know how an animal develops from a small ball of cells into an organism with distinct functioning parts. That work is taught in every introductory development course. However, if you look closely, you will notice that the work that claimed Spiemann the Nobel Prize had another name on it. Hilda Mangold. Hilda Mangold was a graduate student in Hans Spiemann's lab in Freiburg, Germany, and it was her thesis work and experiments that helped propel Spiemann to scientific fame and glory, though she herself would net little of the credit. In the early 1920s, the field of developmental biology was just getting started. Researchers were just beginning to probe the many complex steps required for a single fertilized plant or animal egg cell, or zygote, to form into an embryo, and from there into an adult organism. This research was not not easy because embryos are pretty small and fragile things. To make matters worse, they're also vulnerable to infection, and researchers didn't have antibiotics yet to add to their cultures. Some things were already known thanks to observing embryos under a microscope. Researchers understood that the zygote starts by undergoing several cell divisions to become a blastula, a small hollow cluster of cells. At that stage, the individual cells are known as blastomeres. The blastula stage is where cells begin to specify, which is to say, they they set down the path to becoming a specific cell type. Eventually, that will mean the difference between becoming a part of the nervous system versus, say, a skin cell. However, researchers didn't yet know what set cells down that path. It could have been some kind of signal from their environment, like some sort of chemical. Or maybe becoming a specific cell type was an intrinsic part of the cell, and different cells had different genetic information in their nucleus that controlled their eventual fate. We just didn't know. At the time, Hans Spiemann's laboratory was well known for its ingenious experiments in amphibian embryos. One of his first experiments in 1903 tested whether early newt blastomeres all carried identical information in their nucleus, and therefore had the same capacity to produce an organism. In the early 1920s, Hilda Mangold, at the time Hilda Pruschgold, joined Spiemann's lab at the University of Freiburg as a doctoral student. And after a time, Spiemann gave her the experiment that would later change developmental biology. Spiemann had been interested for a while in the concept of a developmental organizer, a tissue or cluster of cells that would organize surrounding tissues into the parts of a mature organism. He suspected that in amphibian embryos, this organizer was located in a small region of the early embryo called the dorsal lip. That part of the organism would develop into the notochord, the embryonic precursor to the spinal cord. Now, in order to test this, he had Mangold transplant the dorsal lip of one amphibian embryo to the region of another another embryo that would become the belly region. That's an important detail, because the notochord forms the spine on the opposite side of the organism. If a belly is developing into a spine, you can pretty much tell it's because of your experiment. They also used newt embryos of two different species and different colors so that they could identify the host and the donor tissue. If the dorsal lip had not been an organizer region, those cells would have gotten sucked into the host embryo's belly and blended in. You'd get one newt with some cells the color of the host embryo, and some cells the color of the donor, or it could have died. But, you know, what happened was way weirder. The embryo with the two dorsal lips developed two notochords, and given enough time, resulted in twin larvae attached at the belly. One of those was the host color, while the other was a mixture of both host and donor colors. That tells us that the donor tissue was an organizer, and it went and organized some of the host tissue just like it was supposed to, probably by sending them some signal, which we now know to be the case. These transplants were extremely difficult and labor-intensive, and often resulted in failure. At the end of two years of work, only six of Mangold's embryos survived the microsurgeries to make it into the publication. The results were published in 1924, with Spiemann's name coming in before Mangold's on what was technically her dissertation. Some of Spiemann's male colleagues noted after the fact that most other students were sole authors of their dissertations. Unfortunately, around the time that the paper went into publication, Hilda Mangold died of an accident at the age of 26. She did not live to see the impact of her work, which is now a foundation of developmental biology. Spiemann 
even won the Nobel Prize as a result of this experiment, as well as his decades of work in early embryology. And Hilda Mangold's project remains one of the only doctoral dissertations that directly helped result in a Nobel. Despite sticking his name in front of hers on her work, Spiemann did credit Mangold numerous times in his Nobel lectures, but her name would never have joined him on his award because Nobels are not granted posthumously. And their joint discovery would go down in history known as the Spiemann Organizer. Fortunately, more and more developmental biologists are now calling it the Spiemann Mangold Organizer instead, to commemorate both the amazing scientists who discovered it. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow, which was brought to you by Unbounce. When's the last time you went to a website and you just could not find what you wanted? Maybe it was cluttered or confusing, or the text was too hard to read and you couldn't wait to just tab out of there. Well, if you want to avoid people having that kind of frustrating experience on your website, you can design it with Unbounce. Unbounce makes creating the perfect landing page easy. Instead of wasting time muddling through code or hiring a developer, you can use Unbounce's drag-and-drop builder and choose from over 100 templates. You can click the link in the description below or go to unbounce.com slash scishow and use the promo code scishow to get 20% off your first three months. Thank you.